The kick's power comes from the torque generated by the rotation of the hips. It's the same principle that cracks a whip. Turning the hips just a few degrees forces the foot to travel a much greater distance and creates a lot of speed as it does. The longer the leg and quicker the rotation, the faster the kick. And unlike karate, Muay Thai fighters are also taught to strike with the hard bone of the shin. A Muay Thai kick can generate roughly the same force as a baseball bat, enough to crack a rib or a leg. Basically, it works like a point of a knife. All the force is magnified by being concentrated in a small, hard area. Even if the elbow doesn't deliver a knockout, it will almost always leave a nasty cut and often end a fight. It's not the arms, but the legs that drive our fists. Like a piston, the explosive power of the legs is capable of generating hundreds of pounds of force, all to a very vulnerable area, the soft underside of the opponent's jaw. Like the Hanuman move, the flying knee relies on the explosive power of the legs. But rather than spread the power of our blow over two fists, it concentrates it into a spear point of the knee and combines it with the force of gravity. It's the equivalent of hitting our opponent in the chest with a sledgehammer. The hyperextension of the elbow, created by pulling back on the locked arm, virtually ensures that he will be taken down. The knee strike to the wrist dislodges the knife and further loads the elbow and shoulder. The technique can easily result in damage to the elbow joint, the tendons of the rotator cuff, or even a broken arm. The key to this move is turning your opponent's lower arm into a lever. By grabbing his arm during the initial attack, you set up the lever such that direct loading to his elbow joint is achieved. Once the elbow is locked and loaded, you can pull a much heavier opponent off balance by simply lowering your center of weight. With practice, the ninja can hit his intended target from distances as great as 45 feet. At impact, that's more powerful than a major league baseball pitch. This move is more about timing and precision than power. Instead of hacking through the limb, the first strike imparts an injury just a few inches below the elbow. The sword's razor-sharp blade easily slices through the soft tissue of the attacker's arm. This opens up his defense and provides the ninja a clean opportunity to deliver the kill stroke, a powerful shot to the top of his head. The move works by using your opponent's own body weight against him. The first strike can land at speeds greater than 20 miles per hour and can stun your opponent with the same injury producing energy as dropping a bowling ball from over 11 feet onto his torso. By using his arm as a lever in conjunction with the leg sweep, you drive your opponent to the ground. Once he is on the ground, you follow up with a devastating strike to his face. The secret to the move is wrist control. By rotating your opponent's wrist to the maximum extent of its range of motion, the bones of the wrist lock against the bones of the forearm and make it impossible to bring the strong muscles of the upper arm to bear. Then, you can pull your opponent off balance and into a potent knee strike. The combined force of the knee strike and your opponent's forward momentum can be as much as 2,000 pounds, enough to dent sheet metal. The effectiveness of the Pola Kaimau lies not in raw power, but in speed. By relying on your triceps to snap the strikes forward over the elbow, three blows can hit in seven-tenths of a second. The final impact of the strike to your opponent's face can deliver as much as 175 watts of power, more than enough power to stun him or crush the cartilage of his nose. You then add insult to injury, firing one last shot into one of the most sensitive regions of the body, the groin. Pulling off the move relies on two factors. The first is to combine the block and the strike into a single action. This reduces the time your opponent has to respond to just tenths of a second. But the real focus is to aim your strike at the throat. Because as little as 76 pounds of force can collapse the larynx, the strike doesn't need to deliver a lot of force to be deadly. One blow like this and the fight is over. Energy needed to throw an opponent can more than double, but performed correctly, Uchimata requires almost no energy yet it can deliver up to 5,000 pounds of force. If it weren't for the mat, a throw like Uchimata would be enough to cause serious injury or even paralysis. You use the strength of your legs to maintain your dominant position while you secure the choke. 
Just a few pounds of pressure on the collar of his gi is enough to reduce the blood flow to the brain to a trickle and end the match. Hold this move for 10 seconds and the fighter will black out. Hold it just a bit longer and he's dead. By bending the elbow across the fulcrum of your hips, you're subjecting the weak joint to the leverage of two strong forces. The pull of your thighs on his shoulder and your hands on his wrists. As little as 1,000 pounds of force can be enough to destroy the elbow. The leverage of the armbar can supply much more than that. The sacrifice throw is a simple lesson in conservation of energy. The stronger the opponent attacks, the further he gets thrown. It works like a catapult, where your opponent's momentum supplies the counterweight. The faster he's going, the further he's going to fly. And the harder he's going to land. That land with the side, ball, or top of the foot. The gastrizin uses the heel to deliver the blow. This alignment of the heel, ankle, lower leg complex channels some 2,000 pounds of force into the opponent more than enough to break a baseball bat. The higher you can lift your opponent in this move, the faster he'll hit the ground. It's not just your force working against him. His acceleration, due to gravity, can mean his head hits the ground with a 3,500 pound impact. On a hard surface like concrete, this is more than enough to cause a serious brain injury. First, the opponent's arm works as a lever to optimize your control. Second, your own back serves as a pivot point for the throw. The strength and stability of your back allows you to throw a much heavier opponent than in a move that requires you to lift him. This move uses your opponent's arm as a lever working against him. The greater the torque on his shoulder, the greater the pain inflicted. And exceeding the joint's normal range of motion causes more than just pain. The soft tissue, muscles, and the bone can all be seriously damaged by this pressure. The goal of this lock is to stretch the tendons at the top of the foot to the breaking point. The strongest tendons have a tensile force threshold of just over 400 pounds. Applying any more pressure than that can tear the tendons from their base or snap them in two. Because you don't have time to cock your arm in a surprise attack, Bursting's effectiveness doesn't come from the rotational power of the torso. Instead, it's driven by the legs, which hurl you forward into your opponent. Both the block and the strike land with 300 pounds of force, more than enough to collapse the windpipe or fracture the delicate bones of the face. Doing the 360 defense requires you keep your, keep your body in motion at all times, using your arms to defend different angles of attack. The key is keeping your arms at an oblique angle with your hands open and straight so that you don't take any blows straight on. Each is deflected down the angle of your forearm, which reduces its impact. Your opponent is relying on his grip strength and outstretched arms to maintain the choke. The strength of your back and shoulder muscles is greater than the applied force of your opponent's hold, so it doesn't take much to break his grip. And the closer your hands are to your own neck, the greater the leverage. The disarm is basically a judo wrist lock and uses many of the same principles. By pulling your attacker forward as you turn, he loses his balance, giving you control of his wrist. The barrel of the gun then becomes a lever, allowing you to take the gun. Because you are using the muscles of your torso, which can deliver up to ten times more force than the muscles of the wrist, the disarm works against an opponent who is much stronger than you an elbow strike from another martial art, Muay Thai. But because the metal doesn't deform on impact, like human bone, every ounce of power is channeled directly into your opponent's face. With the twisting motion of the torso generating the force, and the stiff metal of the M16 providing the impact, it's enough to shatter a cheekbone or break a jaw. The combined momentum of your forward step, the twist of your torso, and the swing of the rifle the butt stroke can strike your opponent at over 18 miles per hour, carrying well over 550 pounds of force. That's enough to drive a 16-penny nail through nearly two inches of pressure-treated wood. Add a follow-up slash and thrust with a bayonet, and the butt stroke becomes a real killer. But the real damage from the knee bar doesn't come from gravity. It comes from leverage. 
Once the knee is locked, your hips act like a fulcrum, and his leg acts like a lever, multiplying any force you apply. So even though the ligaments and tendons around the knee can sustain 1,700 newtons of force, the knee bar can load a lot more than that, enough to completely destroy the joint. This is opponent at a location above the center of mass, while using his sweeping leg to create a tripping point, which is below his opponent's center of mass. Once the loss of stability has occurred, gravity does the work and the damage. On the ground and on his back, your opponent is now vulnerable to any number of finishing strikes. Being much like a nutcracker, your forearm and biceps apply pressure to your opponent's carotid arteries. Located on either side of the trachea, these two arteries are the only way to get blood to the brain. It can take less pressure than squeezing an orange to stop the flow of blood to the arteries. And with no blood flow, the brain shuts down almost instantly. Fight over of your opponent's leg, you turn his hip into a pivot point. And there are two forces being imparted about the pivot point, one by the arm above and one by the sweep below. These forces act as a couple, resulting in your opponent's rotation, rotation that slams him right to the deck. And given the speed of rotation and the force of gravity, that impact could cause permanent injury.